I think Bitcoin has been in a sort of holding pattern for the last year or so. As people try to figure out whether the problems Bitcoin has encountered can be resolved or whether you're going to need to move to some other sort of system to get the benefits that Bitcoin promised. He has that much power at this point. No, I mean back before this announcement, I thought it was one person because you know, actually, honestly, people think it's a mass, it's this incredibly massive achievement, but it's hitting at the I mean, hitting at the right thing uh, on, at the right thing at the right time. It's I thought it was just some you know random thirty to fifty year old male, quite possibly actually Japanese. I mean, it looks like uh, I was close to being right on everything but the Japanese part. But. So I uh, discovered uh, Bitcoin back in uh, 2011. Actually, the first time I heard about it, my dad told me about it. And he said, it's this real interesting new currency. It's not controlled by any kind of government. It's decentralized. I should check it out. I started like seriously getting on the forums, trying to kind of earn some Bitcoins myself by just writing articles for various different blogs. Eventually, I yeah, like started getting more and more into it. I ended up co-founding uh, Bitcoin Magazine. So in high tech, we talk about the network effect. Like eBay had fantastic network effect. There's two sides, buyers and sellers, right? People auctioning stuff and people who want to buy stuff. The bigger the marketplace is, the more buyers you attract, the more buyers there are, the more people want to sell there. That's network effect. eBay is the 800 pound gorilla. In the, the cryptocurrency space, right now Bitcoin is the 800 pound gorilla. In terms of a technological proof of concept, it has inspired you know, developers around the world, financial institutions, governments, uh, stock exchanges, uh, pretty much everybody doing anything in financial services has paid attention to the, the technological achievement. The, the currency and the, the store of value, less so. The blockchain technology that Bitcoin introduced has been eclipsing the original application of the blockchain, Bitcoin. At the end of 2013, people were getting interested in blockchain technology. They were getting interested in uh, this uh, idea, particularly that you can use it for applications other than Bitcoin, and that Bitcoin, the currency, and blockchain technology are two different things. See you, dude. Should be filming the screen right now. I'm about to light him up. The world can change completely based on what this technology can do. Like you know, it's it's like alien technology basically. Like we've never had it before, and now we've kind of got it, and everyone's kind of rushing to play with it. So uh, I think that's what's exciting about it. You know, like like if you look at like like for, for like de like different developers, like the build products. You know, they always want to like uh, try out new cool stuff. So, like, you know, if they were building before before the internet, they were building software, and then they started building web pages, which was really cool. And then from you know after building web applications, you know, mobile got much more cool. Like, you know, it's like more more uh, challenging or new new horizons to build on mobile instead of web. And I think like blockchain is kind of that next step. So, 1.1 billion dollars has been raised to date. Uh, by cryptocurrency and blockchain startups. That's a really, really significant number. Um, the other point that's interesting with Q1 especially is that we saw a reversal of the trend. There had been a declining level of investment in the industry over the last several quarters, both in terms of overall fund flow and average deal size. This really changed in Q1 with the emergence of blockchain as a distinct investment category. Identity Mind Global is a provider of risk management services. We see a blockchain really as a new medium for financial assets. T0 is a platform for the exchange of digital assets, which we've created uh, using blockchain technology. It's specialized for the exchange. Rather than having to have a piece of plastic that you got to remember with you, 
What you could do is you could use your mobile device. We do blockchain analytics. Especially we started with a Bitcoin blockchain, public blockchain. We're going to move now next to the Ethereum public blockchain and eventually connect to multiple blockchains. We um, build a proof of concept. This um, a decentralized energy company that connects neighbors in a rural environment and uh, um, counts their um, consumption and production of electricity on the blockchain. Right. I am Satoshi. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, does it matter to me or to us? Um, um, I don't know, I guess not. We refer to ourselves as Bitcoin agnostic. If Bitcoin finds itself successful, great. If Bitcoin doesn't find itself successful, that's great. That doesn't impact what we're trying to do. I think here we're pretty agnostic in terms of which one's the one. When companies are fighting for your eyeballs using, the, using blockchain tech, competing blockchain tech, that's when it really starts. Right now, everyone's still building the cars to start the race, it feels like, you know, you know, everyone's still, you know, this is in development, you know, Barclays has got this program, they've got this program in like Commonwealth Bank and all these other, all these big institutions are starting to, you know, build the pieces and dedicate, you know, blockchain labs and have all these people that are getting uh, resources and monies get thrown at it. Now, I'm not saying that those guys are going to be the, the reason why we all feel it, but, you know, it might be a bunch of hackers sitting in a bedroom that makes something really awesome that you, uh, that changes your life, and, and that could be it. So, I don't know, we'll wait and see. Beyond that, there's the Ethereum vision that this isn't just going to be a place for financial transactions, this is going to be how basically organizations and informational flow around the world happens as well. In some ways, that's even more ambitious. That's a vision of the future in which you essentially have this enormous global computer on which all of the software and decision-making and political processes can run. 